Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Ross on Cars. I'm Ross Furlong and this is a Range Rover Sport SE D300 Dynamic. All right, so the Range Rover Sport, I was very interested to get this in because it sits between the Range Rover and the Defender, which I've both reviewed recently. Uh, this one I figured might be uh, the perfect compromise and in a way, you know, do you still need the big Range Rover if this one is offering as, as much luxury and as much size as it does now? Uh, it's gone up in size, it's nine centimetres longer than it used to be and uh, it's got better legroom in the back. The design for me is, is much improved. I really like the look of this one, didn't love the look of the, the previous generation of the Range Rover Sport. Uh, this one here is uh, 93 and a half thousand list it's got about six and a half thousand pounds worth of options on it though um, so it's quite comes in quite a lot cheaper than the uh, uh, the range rover in the hierarchy what's that you know 25 grand list with no options cheaper uh, to start with and the pcp is much uh, better on it as well so you can get one of these uh, i think i've priced it up as about 800 and a bit per month on pcp so definitely very interesting sort of proposition this car and someone like Harry Metcalf for example Harry's garage he's he's ordered this this the D300 he didn't go for the hybrid this time went for the uh, diesel I would do the same I have to say even though I've got a Tesla at home uh, my next car will probably be a diesel because I want to do those long trips you know I want to be I want to be able to drive to Austria if I need to and um, without many stops so that's that's the main reason for that for me but going back to this car uh, as I said, it's got a few options on it. It's in Vazarine Grey. Uh, I wouldn't choose this grey. I saw a very nice sort of navy blue that I liked. Um, it's got uh, gloss black wheels on it, 22 inch. Those are, I think, a thousand pound option. It's got black painted brake calipers. Again, that's 400. Privacy glass, 400. And uh, panoramic roof, about a thousand. I think it's got the comfort pack. Can't be sure, not quite sure how to check that interior, but I think, I think it does have that as well. Um, so it's a, it's a nicely specced up model. Um, it's got a big boot. I managed to get a double base and a mountain bike in there this, this morning, along with two small children. So it's uh, good for the uh, school run. And um, I just think generally it, it looks a lot nicer than the old one. Uh, it just kind of uh, feels a bit more kind of proper, big kind of Range rover -y thing going on there. Now, I like the look of the Defender as well. Um, and I was very pro that car until I got in it. So let's go and have a look at this one and, and see what it's all about. So the question for me when I get into this Range Rover Sport is, have I turned left or have I turned right? I think I've turned left. Definitely quite business class in here, much more so than the Defender. Uh, I don't think you'd notice that much difference with the full fat Range Rover being in here. It's very, very nice. The quality of the materials is very high. Um, it's very wide, very comfortable. Nice finish on all these buttons here. Well, this is very high quality feel to it. Um, uh, it's got nice big uh, wing mirrors. It's got this very, very good Meridian sound system. Uh, I've been listening to that. It's really some of the best sound from a car I've had for a long time. Uh, it's very sleek, very minimalist. Um, there's somewhere to put your phone, which is quite key for me, actually. It's, it's surprising how many cars, you, there's nowhere to put your phone, like dedicated place to put your phone. This has it. Uh, it has the 13-inch uh, screen that we see on uh, both of the Defender and Range Rover. Um, there's not many buttons. Um, I'd quite like to see a few more buttons with, uh, for example, just the air conditioning unit. Uh, I, I've struggled to find how to cool myself down this morning. Um, I don't really like the, um, the climate control setup. It's easy enough once you've found out and you know how. It does have Apple AirPlay as well. Uh, so that's perfect. Uh, I was using uh, Waze to get out of London yesterday. What else to say about it? It's got um, lots of uh, cubby holes, you know, somewhere to put your coffee cup, somewhere to put your water, big cubby holes down here. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's a high class interior. You wouldn't mind spending a few hours in here, that's for sure. On a long journey, there's plenty of headroom. This one has a panoramic roof with a sort of a cover on it. Uh, so you can pull that back. Um, a few more buttons up here. Um, you can get one of those um, one of those things, an optional extra where you, uh, if your boot is full, you can put the camera at the back so you can see out the back. Just um, yeah, I give it uh, a 
solid eight out of ten in here. Very, very good. All right, so driving the Range Rover Sport. It does feel a bit sportier, actually. I've got that kind of Range Roverly waft, but um, certainly coming home on the A roads last night and on the motorway, a little bit of poke this thing. 300D only, but uh, 300 brake horsepower, 0 to 60 in six seconds. is not bad. There's not that lag that you get, or I got anyway, on the Defender um, with the accelerator either. So just a nice pickup. It's got a little bit of a growl to it. So yeah, plenty fast enough for a two and a half ton car. Um, just move over and let this guy come through. There we go. Yeah, so it um, does feel a bit more sporty than the big, uh, big Range Rover. The ride is very supple, much like the Defender, actually. I found the Defender a really nice car to hustle along once you've got it going. You get about 35 miles to the gallon from this one. It's a Mahev. So a long run to uh, the Alps or somewhere, you know, you probably might get up to about 40. Very comfortable family car, what can I say? And I do like it more than the Defender. I find the seats very comfortable, unlike the Defender. Though there are a lot of people that are disagree with me on the seats in the Defender. Had some comments saying they're the most comfortable seats they've ever, ever spent time in. So, you know, maybe over the longer term, the Defender seats are uh, a good bet. Um, now, I just want to turn to something that is a little bit off piste here, because this morning I got diverted because someone had wrote, closed the roads here. So all, every, all the, the normal roads to school were messed up so I ended up having to go down a very narrow road along with a load of transit vans and farm trucks and everybody, everybody's going down it and um, a Volvo very kindly to start with anyway backed up a long way so that we could get through but when I got up level with him he threw me the universal sign a bit like a how can I say this the cocktail shaker sign you know the one I, what I mean yeah so I stopped and um, asked him what that was about and he started having a go at the Range Rover. Now, the Range Rover is quite big, fair enough, but it's no bigger than a transit van, it's no bigger than a farm truck, it's no wider than a, the Volvo that he was driving, really, maybe a little bit wider. So I can't help thinking that there is maybe a little bit of um, anti uh, Range Rover driver feeling out there. I've come across it occasionally before. And um, yeah, just something to be aware of. It was the first time I'd really come across it. Uh, anyway, I um, I rebutted his uh, his suggestion that uh, the Range Rovers are driven by a certain type of people. But it does bring you on to the idea that the Defender is a maybe a bit more of an acceptable uh, vehicle from a, an image perspective. So uh, even though it costs anywhere, you know, as much as much as a, um, as a Range Rover Sport, they're similar priced vehicles actually, depending on what options you put on them. Okay, a Range Rover Sport's a bit, a bit above, but. Um, the image of the Range Rover Sport maybe still needs a bit of work. <laughs> I don't know maybe in rural communities. I mean, if I've been driving an old Range Rover or any, any Defender, uh, or indeed probably a Discovery, I might not have got that reaction, but um, yeah. Something to bear in mind anyway. So down to the nitty gritty, would I buy one? Do you know, I'm not sure. 
I, I'm more tempted to buy one of these than I was the Defender. Uh, I don't really want a Defender, um, but maybe the 130 would change my mind. I, I like the look of that thing, um, but I don't think I want a Defender. Um, the Range Rover is, um, you know, organ sellingly expensive, as uh, even someone like Harry Metcalf is balking at the price that you have to pay per month to roll around in one of those these days. Crazy. So. It's certainly viable in the sense that the other two aren't. And um, I think in the right spec for me, if it was uh, you know, that kind of very dark blue, I wouldn't go for the dark wheels. I don't like dark wheels, it's the right spec anyway. Um, it could be a very good, very good family vehicle. Yeah, so um, in sum, I can understand why people are buying these and I can understand why inform people are buying these because uh, it can do everything that a big Range Rover can do. It's almost almost as luxurious, almost as big, and um, it's uh, maybe half the price on PCP these days, so go figure. Anyway, I'm going to get this thing back up to London now. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode of Ross on Cars. If you did, press like down below and also subscribe because we've got lots of interesting cars coming up this summer. Hope to see you for the next one.